Welcome to the Push Forward Podcast. I'm your host, Alex. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking to a real-life influencer, creator, writer, and so much more. I want to welcome our guest, Rhiannon DeVerk, to the podcast. Thank you so much. Hi. <laughs> Hi. All right. Well, our listeners, you know, are mainly creators, influencers, marketers, but you also have some solopreneurs who want to understand the world of this, you know, the not just the social media, but how to monetize. And you've been working with brands as a micro influencer, which I, I don't think the term is... I th different people have different um, stats on, on that, you know, like what's a nano influencer, micro influencer. Right. At the end of the day, I see influencers as playing a critical role to helping brands, um, you, you know, really take their product, their service, their for nonprofits might be their mission to the next level. So you're so, even though we call them affiliates, what I try to explain to our listeners on the Push Forward podcast is that Ultimately, you're an extension of the sales team, of the business development team. You are engaging with that potential target audience. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, even though I have a small following, um, what I'm doing is content creation. So the brand can then use that content in many more ways. And they didn't have to, you know, hire a full-time team member to do that, I guess. Right. And I, I think for especially the small businesses that may not, you know, they may feel like, well, I, I'm not going to go on a big network like Rakuten or Commission Junction or something like that because I can't, I can't afford a big affiliate program. Well, this is where influencers like yourself come into play. It's kind of like matching someone who is looking for quality over quantity with someone who really curates an audience that is more quality over quantity. Uh, and so talk to me about how you got started into it. I know your background is ghostwriting and writing. You've written many books. But so tell me how you made that switch from doing the, the writing to then working with brands and how that works. Um, basically, the pandemic happened. Um, <laughs> so before then, um, because I'm a photographer as well, um, not really right. by more by hobby. Um, but until the pandemic, I had an unbroken streak of posting on Instagram every day for about six years. Wow. And I was posting. And I never posted myself. It was all just photography. Um, and I, well, I posted my book covers a few times when I had a new book coming out myself, obviously. But yeah, I, I wasn't on there myself as a person. Then the pandemic happened. Um, I converted, I think, my entire portfolio to black and white and posted that. Then I did some new edits on them and posted those. Um, and then, you know, I'm thinking, oh, okay, we still haven't come out of lockdown. You know, we're still, there's nothing more I can post. What can I do? Um, so I started posting more kind of daily life stuff, more selfies, um, and, and people responded to it, I guess. Um, and things just kind of spiraled from there. <laughs> And, and how did you go about finding those partnerships? Because I think for our listeners here who are solopreneurs, who are looking for influencers, but as well as the influencers who are always looking to find new ways to, to get in with a brand of any size. Um, what's your strategy? Do you, do you, this is a question I like to ask a lot of influencers and affiliates. It's like, do you just focus on the monetization or do you, or do you have a strategy that says, well, I need to be able to use and like that product or like that company's mission? How do you determine that? Yeah, I absolutely for sure need to like the product. Um, okay. So if I'm in a situation where I've been uh, working with a brand, I've tested out the product and I don't like it, mm -hmm. I simply won't, I won't post. I'll get in touch with them and say, look, you're not going to like what I'm going to post, so I'm not going to do it. Um, that actually just happened recently. I was given a load of books to review. Um, and I just, I, I couldn't, they were terrible. Oh, they wow. would have been one. So, you know, I just didn't post anything at all. Um, which the brand obviously is happy with not getting bad publicity. So we just parted ways and then, and, and that was fine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So it sounds like you're, you know, because you're a creative, obviously with your photography and writing, um, let's talk about books for a second. Cause I think books are such a big topic. Um, you know, TikTok obviously likes, helped that skyrocket that that trend yes. in the 
early 20, 20s. <laughs> you know, that sounds like so long ago. Um, but, um, you know, in, in, in terms of books, um, the types of books that you're ghostwriting is, are they fictional or nonfiction? Both. Mm. Both. Okay, great. Well, that's, yeah, usually I, I see a lot of ghostwriters who like to focus on one or the other. So you, yeah. you, you, you have a different uh, route. What about, um, are you writing any books for your, your own brand yourself or no? I do. Yes, I do. I do. Um, so I've written one true crime book. Um, Tell I mean, us about I'm, it. I'm, I, yeah, it's um, it's about Dennis Nielsen, who's a real life serial killer. Um, so, uh, actually, if I, I'll go into the backstory real quick. Do <laughs> you have a podcast to go with it? Because come on, I, mystery <laughs> goes hand in hand with podcasting. Yeah, I um, back in about I think when was it twenty sixteen or something like that. I knew I wanted to write a book for myself. I'd written I don't know. 30 or 40 maybe for clients by this point. Okay. And I wanted something to come out under my own name. Um, so I had been looking at the charts, the, the Amazon bestseller charts, a different serial killer. And I can't remember who it was now, but a different serial killer had died in prison. And all of the top 20 on Amazon was full of books about this guy. And I thought, oh, I see an opportunity here. Right. Okay. So I looked and like, I was like, okay, what are the big serial killers that are still alive? Okay, Dennis Nielsen at the time was still alive in prison. So, okay, let's write a book on this topic. Um, I initially was going to get it traditionally published. Um, and then he died. And I hadn't had the book out yet. And I thought, right, well, um, as far as the marketing strategy goes, it's either I publish it within the next two days or I don't do it at all, really. Because um, that was the whole point of it, was to have it out there when he was going to be in the news again. Um, so I just took the plunge and self-published it. And... It was great. <laughs> wow. That is awesome. You know, so writing a book, so, you know, something that is is so permanent versus writing, and I, I think this is a conversation I often have with uh, influencers, marketers, uh, creators who are like, look, I, 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 I want to write a book. I have something to say. I have a story to share. Yeah. Um, but I'm so busy creating my day-to-day -day content, both copy images, yes. videos. And so even if I could find a time, I, I, I think I'm going to continuously get more out of just creating, you know, mm -hmm. content that is going to help my SEO. Whereas, yes. you know, some people can't see the value in writing a book in terms of like SEO and I, we could have a completely different conversation about yes. that, but which is very, <laughs> yeah, which is very in depth. Right. I mean, it, all of it matters, but I think at the end of the day, if you have a good story to tell, would you say that having written books under your own brand, your own name, has that helped you position yourself as an influencer with brands? For sure. I mean, if you can put best selling author next to your name, then, you know, that's that's a business card, basically. That's that's um, a really big thing. And not just for influencers, but for speakers, um, coaches, anyone that's trying to share a message with the world, mm -hmm. having having author, or even better, having best-selling author next to your name is, is like saying, you can trust what I'm saying mm -hmm. because right. I'm the expert on this topic. Absolutely. Talk to us about the the challenges that you go through when you're working with brands that you know you identify with and you say, okay, I want to promote their stuff because I I can get behind it. So when you get out there, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, on your website, your blog, what are what are like your biggest challenges? You know, other than the algorithms, we the algorithms are also a completely different topic. That is <laughs> SEO. What are your biggest challenges? I think sometimes um, execution versus imagination is a big one because oh, I, I can that. I can come up with like really great ideas. Like coming up with ideas is basically what I do in my day job, right? Yes. Um, so I can come up with amazing cinem cinematic ideas um, and then come back to reality that it's just literally me with usually just using a camera phone like in my office. So we have to then bring it down a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I really like that, that you're saying execution, but on the same, um, on the same topic of that, um, the fact is that uh, all of us who are creatives, 
you you have to go through that process where you leave so much in the back oh, room. Okay. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. if you had a store and you were building stuff in the back, you you might put one out of 20 or 100 out. And it drives yeah. you crazy because you're like, these are pieces of ideas that didn't go out. Um, and so I agree with you that sometimes it can feel like, oh my God, I didn't execute enough. And I, I, I listen, I feel like that all the time. And so do some of our <laughs> listeners who are marketers and, and, uh, and understand the need for testing and brainstorming. Um, it's just part of the work. So I think the brands that understand that process mm -hmm. value people like you, the influencer who, who, who they understand you're not just going to create something on the first try and put it out. Right. 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 To make it work. So when it comes to doing those deals, how do you position yourself to, you know, help our smaller influencers who are just getting into it? Like, how do you position your value to, to explain like, look, there's a lot of creative, you know, expertise and time behind putting out your product or service out there. So how, how do you position that? Is it a media kit? Is it a video? How do you do that? Yeah. Um, one of the things, I mean, I, I get a lot of my leads from um, sites that are specifically set up to connect employees with brands. So in those okay. cases, it's really easy to just put together, you know, a portfolio right there on the site and say, look, these are the people I've worked with before. These are the five-star reviews they've given me. Um, you know, these are the results that we made together. Um, so people can actually go through and go, oh, actually, I'd like to, to see a video just like this one that you made um, or some right. shots just like this one that you took. So those testimonials definitely help. Um, oh. a, a, a question that I get from the, it's, a, it's less of a question and more of a critique from influencers oh. who've been in it like yourself is, um, you know, we've had a few influencers here on the show um, who say, you know, and of course off, off the podcast, but it, it is a question that I get from all sides. So it's like, I, I understand I need to work with the brand and I understand that I need to work with the liaison, the marketer <laughs> and the marketer mm -hmm. has like all these crazy goals and uh, the marketer drives me crazy. So what, yes. what do you do? Cause you're there to make the marketing team look better, right? Like right. that's ultimately what you're doing. Uh, drive more sales and things like that. So do you have any tips for influencers who are, Maybe they're not playing nice with the marketing team at these companies. Uh, any tips that you can give? I think find your collaboration style. Um, for me, I know that if I get instructions from the brand and it's a 15-page PDF, I'm probably not going to do the best work with them because once I have too many rules and regulations, Ooh. that starts kind of crunching down the amount of stuff that I could potentially do. And I might come up with an idea and then go, oh, no, I can't do that because of rule 5B. What about that? No, I can't do that because it has to be on screen all time. You know, like, and it just, it stifles me. And I, I find that I'm more focusing on, have I met all of the rules? Oh, my God, have I missed any? Than actually doing something really good for the brand. So just from experience, from having had that situation, I now kind of, if someone comes to me and it's just like, this is the kind of idea of what we want maybe up to two pages of information then i'll do it but if it's a lot of pages i might kind of go you know what guys i think this is a little bit too intense for, for what i do <laughs> i so agree with that too many rules i like that because mm -hmm. um we had an influencer in a in a uh, mastermind group who was asking us they they've come across an rfp a request for a proposal from a very large brand and to your point it was like this pdf was hundreds of pages of course, right. it included like the basics thing, you know, like brand guide and all that stuff, messaging. And, but beyond that, the, the, what they were looking for, for this campaign was just insane. And they were in the mastermind yeah. group. So what do you guys think? It's like, listen, from a marketer standpoint, um, another human being created those rules. Right. <laughs> like, so it's actually not tested because when you look at the brand and what they've put out, they've been way more risky or they've tried new things, but now they're trying to like stifle creativity uh, for whatever reason. And um, somebody created that, another human being. And so I guess it comes back to what you said, like, is it too many rules? And I think for creatives, it, it, it just, yeah. it doesn't, 
If you don't have room for testing, that's what I say in marketing. So here on the Push Forward podcast, we talk a little bit about marketing. Don't go too deep into it. Try to stay more in the creative world. But um, in marketing, you have to create room for testing. And, and that yeah. just gets creativity. Um, I think as well, from the experiences that I've had, most of the time, obviously not all of the time, but most of the time when someone has that many guidelines, it's from a, a company or a marketing department that maybe isn't actually up to date with what the trends are and what oh, the best practices are. And absolutely. they'll say, you know, you must include these 17 hashtags. And I'm like, okay, brilliant. People who already know your brand are going to be all over those hashtags. Aren't we supposed to be trying to reach other people who haven't right. heard of your brand before? Because you've left me no room. <laughs> I don't want right. to put 30 hashtags on because that's not what, that I found to be the best for my Instagram account, right? Like, so I know from my experience, if I do this thing you're asking me to do, it will not get results. That makes sense. Well, before we close out today's episode, I do want to ask you about mm -hmm. AI and the yeah. impact and how you feel about it. Because I know I, yeah. uh, I have different marketers, influencers, solopreneurs who are like, I love it. Me personally, I love it. It's helped my productivity. Um, it's not going to take over my work, my job for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I love it. And our listeners know I love it. And so I encourage people to lean into it. It's not that you're going to get free, great stuff. You still have to iterate a lot. But I want to get to really understand what how you feel about it and how you're, what are you hearing from brands? Are they saying, don't use AI to create it? And even if they're saying that, how could they check that? And then does that lead you to have other competitor influencers who maybe are gaming the system? I mean, it's just such a interesting right. topic. Yeah, it is an interesting and such a broad topic. And I think that there's kind of, in my mind, there's kind of two camps of AI. And there's okay. AI, which is like productivity based, which I am all for. I use, okay. you know, AI to do meeting transcripts for me and, um, you know, help me come up with schedules, things like that. I think that's great. Um, AI that does creative work, I think is um, maybe pointless. <laughs> I mean, I feel yeah. like the the point of creativity is, is heart and soul um, and human ingenuity. And mm -hmm. um, if you then make a machine do it, I'm kind of like, okay, sorry, is this still art? I don't know. Um, I mean, we could have a whole whole episode dedicated to that debate right but um i think and also from what i do i'm not worried about it um i'm not worried about it impacting me because i'm high end with my writing mm -hmm. um so the people that are turning to ai for that kind of stuff they're replacing low end writers so that's not really affecting me where i am in my career i think i have solidarity though with those people who aren't going to get those opportunities to start out the way that i did um and with artists who are going to miss out on opportunities. Um, so, yeah, I think the creative side of AI I'm against. Um, and I, yeah, you're right. I don't know how we're going to regulate it, how we're going to tell whether something was made from AI or not. It's just right, right, right. now we can kind of tell. If we look at the edges, we can kind Absolutely. of see the signs. But in five years, will that be the case? I don't know. Yeah, you'll have um, blurred, blurred lines. So, yeah, it's it's a tough one. Um Again, I don't really use it in my influencing work because what brands are looking to me specifically for is to take pictures of their products or to take videos with their products. So um, I guess there is some scope to use AI in that, but it's just not really necessary for me the way I do things. Um, I could change out my backgrounds, but like I already have an established style of background that I use, so I don't need to. Um, so yeah, as far as That's... influencing, it's not really affecting me too much. Yeah, I feel like it's it's early days too. So it's kind of wild, wild west. Everyone is trying to figure out, including the big brands, yeah. how, how it's going to work, you know. Um, sure. And it, it's definitely interesting. We'll keep talking about it here on the uh, Push Forward mm -hmm. podcast. Well, Rhiannon, it's been so great having you here, getting the insights from an influencer who's doing it not only um, with brands, but also you've written the books and you've done the ghostwriting, you've had your own book. So clearly you're creating a lot of great content and contributing to a better digital world because there is so much, <laughs> I, I hate to say it, there's just so much garbage out there. Um, <laughs> and so when I think with, with the creators like yourself who take the work serious and, and is looking to create better, um, better content, I'm always 
for that. Always excited um, to talk to anybody who's doing that. So for our listeners who want to connect with you, maybe they're interested in a ghostwriter, uh, someone who might help them in their own influencer path, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, I'm at Rhiannon DeVerk, um, which I know that's a lot to spell. We'll put it in but... the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> put it in the show notes because I'm not going to do the whole all of the letters right now. Yeah. Um, but that's on Instagram, TikTok, um, and on Threads. I am no longer on X, unfortunately. Uh, I I just I, I had enough. Me too. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my website is exactly the same. It's rianandavert.co.uk. I just everywhere is just my name. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being in the Push Forward podcast, Rhiannon. Thank you for having me.